Hello students, welcome to all of you Shiksha 360 CAP classes. Today we have to discuss the chapter number 9. Chapter number 9, it is regarding the ABF, ABFM, that is regarding the capital investment decision. This topic we will try to cover in 3 to 4 sessions. Important topic and easy topic. So let's start. So in this topic, we have to discuss regarding the investments. Clear? So where the any company basically will do the investment clear. So what are the different scenarios will be created here? So let's discuss regarding that one by one. So no entrepreneur will take a, take a deep, no entrepreneur basically will take a deep dive into any venture clear venture. That is basically we can say that into any business or into any work. So no entrepreneur basically will take a deep dive into any venture just because he or she has money and risk appetite. No one is alone in any big or small project. So therefore, convention of the team, it is essential or necessary. We can see that clear. So team, it is to be necessary for doing any project. How much additional capital will be required? Clear. So how much here? Additional capital basically will be required. It is a starting point. So the decision has to be considered one. And the process and approach has to be purely professional and scientific. So now let's understand what they are trying to say that and how we have to achieve that. So objective of the capital investment decision. Clear objective of the capital investment decision. So the goal of the management. What is the goal of the management? is to increase the wealth of the shareholders. Clear? So our main motive that is here, that is the goal of the management, basically it is to what? That is to increase the wealth of the shareholders as much as possible. Further, that is in order to achieve this goal, the finance manager, it is responsible for analyzing potential investment possibilities and identifying those that can boost the value of the company. Clear? <coughs> So to in order to achieve this goal, the finance manager, it is a responsible basically for analyzing the potential investment policies, possibilities and identifying those that can boost the value of the company. So now we are taking three scenarios here. Consider the following scenario. There are to be three companies, company A, company B and company C. All have the same assets and opportunities for the investment. Clear. All have the same assets and basically opportunities for the investment. However, the management of the company A, clear. However, the management of the company A does not take the advantage of its investment opportunities. Clear. That is, they will not do any investment. Clear. How you have money, but you will not do investment. Clear. So, however, the management of the company A does not take the advantage of its investment opportunities and instead distribute all of its earning off to its shareholders clear and what they will do clear so company a basically does not take the advantage of its opportunities or in we can say that investment opportunities and instead distributes all of its earning to its shareholders on the other side the management of the company b was basically what they will do only makes the investment necessary to replace the deteriorating plant and equipment and distributes any leftover earnings to its shareholder. Clear? So they will invest only up to that much point, or we can say that only up to that much need, which they will necessary, which that, which that is necessary to replace the deteriorating plant and equipment and distributes any leftover earnings to its shareholder. Clear and distributes basically any leftover earning to its shareholder. Third one. <clears throat> Now, what the management of the company see basically what they will do. <coughs> On the other side, the management of the company C invest in all of those possibilities that generate a return. Clear? On the other side, the management of company C basically invest in all those possibilities that generate a return that is higher than what the shareholders could have. Clear? That is higher than what the shareholders could have received. If they have invested the funds themselves, clear. If they have invested the funds themselves, clear. So this allows them, clear. That is, this allows them to earn a higher return, clear. So what the, that is, here that is A, what they will do? They will not take any investment opportunity and distributes all of its earning basically to its shareholders. 
B basically will do the investment as per the requirement and rest they will distribute. Clear? Basically C what they do invest in all of the possibilities. Clear in all of those possibilities that generate a return that is higher than what the shareholders could have received if they have invested the fund themselves. Clear? So this allows them to give a maximum return basically in the case of the company C. Clear? In the case of the company C they will get the maximum return to be here. Now what will happen further let's try to understand it now what will happen in the next so in the case of the company a here any doubt any query you can ask in the comment section so in the case of the if the stars in the instance of company a the return on investment for the owners of the company will not be as beneficial as it would have been if the company had made use of more favorable investment prospectus. So company A will gradually decrease in size, clear? So as they are not doing any investment, clear? So their amount basically will going to be continuously reduced, clear? So company A will continuously decrease in size to the point Where it has no more assets since it will not invest in anything. Clear? So it will not invest in anything. Not even the replacement of the aging plant and equipment. Clear? That is having the depreciation. They are not even get that much income here. Okay, so next we have to do. That is the management of the company B. Clear on the other side, we have to discuss regarding the management of the company B. The management of the company B is passing up a number of opportunities. Clear the management of the company B basically is passing up a number of opportunities to make the valuable investment. Clear to so the management of the company B basically what they will do is passing up a number of opportunities to make the valuable investments. This indicates that there will be missed chances. Clear? So this indicates that there will be missed chances and the wealth of the stockholder basically will not be maximized. Clear? So because they will do the investment basically as per their requirement. Clear? Not we can say that just basically they will do the investment for replacing the we can say that the outgoing assets clear we can say that which is not working properly clear or they have depreciation value large okay so they will do investment it is only that same thing they are saying here that is the management of company b is passing up a number of opportunities to make the valuable investment this indicates that there will be missed chances and the wealth of the stockholder will not be maximized here clear wealth of the stockholder will not be maximized here now we have to move towards the company C. However, the management of the company C is making all the investments that are successful and therefore is increasing the wealth of the owners. Clear? So, however, the management of company C basically it is making all the investments that are going to be successful and is therefore increasing the wealth of the owners. So, the expansion of company C here, clear the expansion of company C here basically will continue so long as there are lucrative investment opportunities. And the company's management is able to take advantage of those opportunities. Clear? So here that is. However, the management of company C is making all investments that are successful. And it is therefore increasing the wealth of the owners further. The investment or the expansion of company C will continue so long as there are lucrative investment opportunities. And the company management, it is able to take the advantage of those opportunities. Clear. And the company management basically it is able to take the advantage of those opportunities here. Further. The objective of the capital investment decision. Clear. So what is the objective? The objective of the capital investment decision is to first assess the requirement and then think about the sources, the cost, the form and the time schedule. Clear. So what is the objective? The objective of the capital investment decision here. The objective of the capital investment decision basically is to first assess the requirement. Clear? Like what is your requirement? 
and then think about the sources clear basically from where you will get the money the cost the form and the time schedule clear and the time taken clear or the time schedule clear so this is the objective clear very very important on the basis of that you will get one question that is what is the objective of the capital investment decision the objective of the capital investment decision is to first assess the requirement and then to think about the sources the cost the form and the time schedule clear think about the sources the cost the form and the time schedule to be here now move to the next point Now, next one that is estimation of the project cash flows. Clear how we have to estimate. Clear estimation of the project cash flows. So, cap cash requirement of any project. Clear that is cash requirement of any project can be safely analyzed in the terms of the long term, short term. Clear. So, cash requirement of any project can be safely analyzed in the terms of the long term, short term, owned borrowed fixed cost working capital inflows and outflows clear so in this way cash requirement of any project basically analyzed clear that is long term short term owned borrowed fixed cost working capital inflows and outflows all this can be appropriately included clear all this can be appropriately included in a projected cash flow statement and what is the process clear so the process require the following thing is to be here first one Identifying the elements of the cash flow, clear, very, very important because this is a one mark question here. That is what are the elements, clear, elements of the cash flow, clear. So a business typically will have the three elements of the cash flow, clear, a business basically typically will have the three elements of the cash flow. First one, that is the initial. Second one, that is the operating. Third one, that is the terminal here. <laughs> clear initial operating and terminal what is will be the initial that is initial investment basically when you are starting any new business so first of all you have to invest in the machinery or in the infrastructure clear so initial investment will be the capital invest expenditure clear so initial investment basically will be the capital expenditure and the contribution for networking capital basically to start the project clear networking capital that is for day to day performing work clear basically for day to day performing work what is the amount of the capital you will use that is to become under the networking capital clear that is to become under the networking capital here okay so initial investment basically will be the capital expenditure and the contribution for the networking capital to start the project here the operating one will compromise of the clear that is initial we have discussed operating next one operating one basically will compromise of the outflow and sorry the operating one basically will compromise of the outflow and resulting inflow of the operations of the business clear so operating capital what is that what is the cash flow that is operating that is outflow and inflow clear that is the operating one basically will compromise of the outflow and resulting inflow of the operations of the business clear to compromise of the outflow and resulting inflow of the operations of the business here. Third one, that is what is the terminal here? Clear. Third one, that is what is the terminal here? So the terminal basically it is the one. What means that is net inflow after paying off all the realization of the assets on a liquidation of the business. When the economic life comes to an end. Clear. Basically when the economic life comes to an end. Clear. So what is the terminal? The terminal it is the one. What means? The terminal basically it is the one that what remains that is the net inflow after paying off all the realizations clear after paying off all the realizations of the assets on the liquidation of the business when the economic life comes to an end clear when the economic life comes to an end all the cash flows are post tax for the reason that the element does not belong to the business or the owners clear so all the flows basically are the post tax for the reason that elements does not belong to the business or the owners that elements doesn't belong to the business or the owners so how the depreciation plays their role here we have to be understand clear how the depreciation basically plays their role here we have to be understand here basically with the help of one example here which we will discuss after five to ten minutes here
ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट वन हाउ टू एस्टिमेट एंड बेसिस ऑफ ईच एलिट सो देर आर फोर प्रिंसिपल टू बी कैप्ट इन माइंड फर्स्ट इट इज द सेपरेशन प्रिंसिपल विच मीन्स वी हैव टू सेपरेट द इन्वेस्टमेंट साइड फ्रॉम द फाइनेंस साइड विच इज सिंपली मीन्स क्लियर दैट इज सेपरेशन प्रिंसिपल दैट इज विच मीन्स दैट वी हैव टू सेपरेट द इन्वेस्टमेंट साइड फ्रॉम द फाइनेंस साइड क्लियर इन्वेस्टमेंट बेसिकली वेयर वी आर इन्वेस्टिंग फाइनेंस दैट इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम For that, basically, from where we are getting the raising money, clear from finance side, which means separating the assets for servicing cost of it. Cash flow into the investment side and the interest, if any, flows to the financing side. Clear in financing side, that is basically from where we are raise the finance for that specific asset. Clear that is to be financing here. Clear so cash flows in to the investment side and the interest, if any, flows into the financing side here. Clear into the financing side here. so then there it is the incremental principle clear so then there it is the incremental principle which means estimate separately the cost which will be incurred clear thus then there is the incremental principle basically which means estimate separately the cost which will be incurred even if the project it is not run from the cost which we incur while running it clear so then there is the incremental principle basically which means estimate separately the cost which will be incurred even if the project it is not run clear even if the project it is not run from the cost which we incur while running it we can also say it is fixed versus variable cost clear we can also say that split is fixed versus variable cost clear that is we can increment that is basically here we can estimate already separately the cost that is Which we have to pay, even the project basically will not run. Clear, even the project will run or not run. This is the cost which we have to pay. Clear, basically which will be incurred, even if the project it is not run from the cost, which we incur basically while running it. Clear. So that is to be basically here we can separately understand that is this much is the fixed cost, this much is the variable cost. Got clear? That is fixed cost basically it will happen. Clear. Here the fixed cost basically will happen whether the business will be running or not. Clear whether the business will be running or not. Fixed cost it is going continuously to be happen here. Next one. So while considering the cash flows, considering the post tax cash flows always it is advisable. Clear since the tax payments cannot be ignored. Clear so while considering the cash flows, considering the post tax cash flows always is advisable since the tax payments cannot be ignored here this is the third principle clear if you ignore you will have to be discount clear if you ignore <coughs> clear this is the third principle. that is fourth one that if you ignore you will have to discount pre tax flows with the discount rate which may or may not be reliable clear that is if we are not for following we cannot for following the proper guidelines or we cannot do sincerely work so we have to be lose something clear so if you ignore that you have to be you will have to discount pre tax flows with the discount rate which may or may not be reliable so that this is the last principle that is the last principle it is the consistency consistency principle clear that is the consistency principle here so now here next one that is collate all the components of the cash flow clear that what are the components clear so all the components of the cash flow namely the fixed capital first one that is the fixed capital second one that is the working capital third one that is the owned capital that is the equity fourth one that is the long term borrowing fifth one that is the outflow of operations such as purchases production expenses operating and administration expenses selling expenses interest cost and inflow on the account of sales and service Are collected and the net flow or the cash flow balance, or the cash balance it is found out to be complete the cash flow statements. Clear is found out to complete the cash flow statements. Clear so that is all the components of the cash flow, namely fixed capital, working capital, owned capital, long term borrowings, outflow for the operations, outflow that is we are paying, such as for the purchases, production expenses, operating and administration expenses. 
selling expenses, interest cost, interest basically which are which we are paying for raising the money, and inflow on the account of sales and subsidies basically all are to be collected and net flow or the cash balance. It is found out to complete the cash flow statement. Clear that is we find out to complete the cash flow statement. So this is prepared for the period. Clear that is to be prepared for the period of the entire project period. Clear this is prepared for the period of the entire project period or for necessarily or for reasonably long enough period. Clear or for reasonably long of period basically to reach a break even that is break even basically it is that one where there is no profit or no loss clear like what we are spending that much amount we are running clear or to reach a break even or achieve other objectives such as debt free status of the closer or hive of etc clear such as the debt free status of closer or hive of etc clear so that is the thing they are saying here that is first of all we have to create all the components of the cash flow here clear Next one that is forecasting and its relation to the regulation of the capital for short, medium and long term periods. Clear that is for what time period we have to need the capital here. Clear so the forecast will be guided by the following factors. Clear so here the forecast basically will be guided by the following factors here. That is first one that is the requirement of the fixed asset like land, factory, building. Clear like requirement of the fixed asset like land, factory, building office premises, plant and equipment, electrical installations, tools, spares, furniture and fixtures, office equipment, computers and embedded or office softwares. This will be under the head long term and requires long term funding. Clear? So that is basically for the long term. All these are comes basically under the capital expenditure. Clear? So this will basically for the long term. Period. So this will be under the had long term and requires long term funding. Second one that is the working capital clear that is for processing day to day work clear. So the working capital here what will be included under that clear. So the working capital basically will include the raw materials. So what will be included under that clear. So the working capital basically will include the raw materials, work in progress, stores, finished goods clear. Third one that is first one that is the raw material. Second one that is the work in progress. Third one that is the stores. Fourth one that is the finished goods in stock. Clear that is the finished goods in stock. Fifth one that is the savables. The sixth one that is the advances and cash balances basically to the meet the for what okay, cash balance basically to meet the manufacturing, operating, marketing and administrating expenses. Clear and administrative expenses. Clear. So all these things basically will be comes under the working capital. Just you have to remember that basically what is the meaning of the working capital to meet the day-to-day -day expenses. Clear? Working capital it is basically for what? Basically to meet the day-to-day -day expenses here. That is regarding the working capital. Okay. Further, the working capital basically will also be required to provide for the business advantages. Clear? So the working capital basically will also be required to provide for the business advances and gap between the statutory dues payment and collection as well as the payment of the income tax clear and collection as well as the payment of the income tax clear the working capital basically will also be required to provide for the business advances advances and gap between the statutory dues payments and collection as well as the payment of the income tax clear and collection as well as the payment of the income tax next one the duration for which the working capital it is required will depend upon the operating cycle of the concerned business clear operating cycle that is from the starting from the raw material till the final product clear why because only after that when the final product it is going to be manufactured only after that we will get the payment clear so that it is the operating cycle clear so that will be the operating cycle here clear so the duration for which the working capital it is required will depend upon the operating cycle of the concerned business. Okay? That will depend upon the operating cycle of the concerned business. While most of the long-term funds, clear, basically, while most of the long-term funds requirements, clear, while most of the long-term funds, basically, requirements, basically, will be met through the equity. That is, basically, by issuing the shares. And the term financing, that is, basically, term financing, that is, long-term loans. So, a part of the working capital, basically, it is also required. Clear, a part of the working capital, basically, it is also required 
to be funded by the promoters as the margin and generally that is 75% can be sourced from the banks clear and generally that is 75% that is sourced from the banks clear so it depends upon project to project clear how much loan basically you will get for that specific project clear so that is and generally they can be that is raised 70 that is generally 75% can be sourced or raised from the banks clear okay so please tell fast now up to this much point all of you are able to understand regarding the short term medium and long term periods clear and what are like basically just you have to remember that capital expenditure that is for the fixed assets that is to be always comes under the capital and it is the duration of that it is always to be long here clear the duration for that it has to be long duration okay now move to the next one i will tell you so a part of the working capital can be sourced from the payables or the sundry creditors clear that is we have to take the amount from that later on we will provide the material to them clear or the products to them clear so a part of the working capital can be sourced from the payables or the sundry creditors the regulations or the business practices many times play important part as far as raising of the finance it is to be concerned here equity equity preference shares debentures can be raised as per the provisions of the Companies Act 2013. Clear equity, preference shares, and debentures can be raised as per the provisions of the Companies Act 2013. The manner, the procedure, and the compliance prescribed need to be taken care of. Clear the manner, the procedure, and the compliance prescribed need to be taken care of. The business norms with regard to the debt equity ratio and rating are also to be kept in mind. Clear so the business norms with regard to the clear the business norms basically with regard to the debt equity ratio and rating are also to be kept in mind clear debt equity ratio we have to discuss in detail regarding all these ratios all you have already covered in the AM. clear in the accounting finance in the jib you have also covered if you have any doubt i will share that session with you so that you can understand all these ratios in detail because these ratios basically will be asked clear in the form of the questions here also so next one that is what is the relationship between the sales production and other functional budgets this we have to be cover in the next session along with this numerical clear that is cash relevant compute the cash relevant cash flows clear all these things we have to cover in the next session very very important questions for the examination point of view clear in the next session we will try to cover two numericals clear in the next session we will try to cover two numericals clear so if anyone has any doubt any query please ask fast in next session we will start from this cash forecast clear from this cash forecast okay so thanks to all of you for joining this session